the purpose of uh, this webinar uh, is uh, to understand uh, how and when to use uh, the extended matrix and what the standard workflow is. Uh, we will have a short theoretical part and a practical part uh, in which we will analyze a case study, a real case study uh, made uh, through the extended matrix. That is the Roman forge of Montebelluna in, in Italy. Um, in a previous mail, I asked you to download some software and a data set. Uh, is there anyone uh, who has not downloaded the data set or the software? Um, this uh, webinar uh, um, is um, because uh, some of you uh, asked me to try to explain, to, to help to start using this tool. And uh, <clears throat> because of a, a lack of time, uh, uh, there is no such uh, so much uh, material out there published in the Extended Matrix uh, um, website. Um, and so the idea is to provide uh, some simple steps to start using it. But the reference uh, site is this, uh, the Extended Matrix uh, uh, website where you can find uh, a lot of stuff uh, to start using uh, uh, this, um, this tool. Um, to create uh, virtual reconstruction for our cultural heritage. Uh, but before to explain in detail uh, what is the extended matrix, uh, we need uh, to spend some words about uh, the problem of reconstruction in archaeology. Uh, in archaeology, uh, we have to deal with fragments, uh, broken remains of ancient objects, ancient architectures. So uh, we have uh, a lot of definitions with the fragment of. We can state that it is almost impossible to uh, interpret an object without thinking to the original intact version of this object. In this case, uh, uh, a Corinthian capital. So uh, we can say that uh, uh, reconstruct uh, is understanding. Reconstruct is to understand, and is something that uh, we have in mind during our uh, activity on the field, and uh, is something that is inside the very first steps of the archaeological study. And we need uh, somehow to recognize it and to manage it in order to be as scientific as possible and to um, put the interpretation in the correct moment of the, of the research. A scientific approach to virtual reconstruction uh, in cultural heritage should make it both um, a research tool uh, for the academic dissemination, papers, books, research projects, and so on and so forth, but also to provide the, the, the virtual reconstruction uh, has to provide the, an active link between the research activities made by the archaeologists and the creative industry because uh, we have uh, and we will have more and more uh, creative industries interested in archaeology where we need to provide a scientific record that is usable and is very um, connected to the research on the field to don't lose the complexity and the richness of the archaeological record and the term 3d reconstruction itself uh, is not uh, uh, so clear unfortunately um, in the domain of geomatics and 3d survey 3d reconstruction indeed is the process to uh, pass from a point cloud to a mesh uh, but uh, in digital humanities, 3D reconstruction is uh, uh, the combining of uh, different sources to create a representation of how uh, context the likelihood uh, was, uh, was in the past. And um, is considered also somehow as an aesthetic endeavor by some part of the community because of uh, the lack of uh, scientific uh, uh, language behind the reconstruction itself. 
um, a lot of reconstructions are good, are well done, but are undocumented. So we have this issue in the community to be considered as a just an aesthetic endeavor. Uh, let have, let's uh, have a closer look to the 3D contents. In the literature, um, there are two main aspects. The survey, the digital acquisition, is uh, the reality-based modeling, the documentation, interpretation, visualization of extant archaeological context, and the virtual reconstruction, that is the source-based modeling, that is based uh, on sources, is the documentation, the interpretation, and the visualization of lost archaeological context. Uh, in these two scenarios, the digital provenance is very different because uh, in the case of the reality-based modeling, we can state uh, that the accuracy can be expressed in real units of measure, for instance, two millimeter of accuracy for uh, um, using a laser scanner. We know that this tool has this accuracy at uh, this distance and so on. Uh, in the case of the source-based modeling, uh, it's very different because uh, the accuracy cannot be expressed in real units of measure. Is a blending of different sources with a different reliability degree. And so it's a complex system. Um, the virtual reconstruction itself uh, is considered just a digital matter. Um, uh, but the virtual uh, is a synonym of potential. It's something that started long before the introduction of computer. It's something that in the archaeological domain has a, a, um, a big history. And uh, um, to work correctly in the digital domain, we have, we have to understand what is the history be, uh, behind the, the virtual reconstruction in the last few centuries. Sometimes uh, the duration between a virtual reconstruction and the remains is easy to understand. In the case of Domus of Cicillus Iucundus at Pompeii, it's easy to understand uh, how we pass through from the state of uh, the situation nowadays to what was uh, in the past. But in other cases, it's difficult to appreciate this link. Uh, in the case of Templum Pacis, uh, the remains uh, are very poor and are covered by the modern city. So it's very difficult to understand the, the extension, uh, the the connection between uh, the elements, the blocks of the columns on the ground and the original aspect of this monument. So we have the, a block, uh, black box effect. And this is because uh, the 3D model is often considered a tool to synthesize and convey different elements, which each with varying degree of reliability. Uh, more, we have a palimpsest effect. Uh, we are. Um, we think that uh, we have a monument and we have to reconstruct it, simply. But indeed, we have a monument and we have several 3D models. That depends on the epoch we want to reconstruct. For instance, the, the Colosseum has a, a, for sure a Flavian um, aspect when it was constructed, built. But uh, uh, in the um, 11th century, it was uh, a castle by the family Frangipane. And it is a virtual reconstruction of this monument in that period. So one monument, monument several virtual reconstructions. So it's something complex. Uh, and we need something that uh, um, reduces the complexity without losing the information. And we need something that is both human readable and computer readable something that can be used inside the digital environment uh, a possible approach is a stratigraphic reading using the extended matrix uh, the stratigraphy is incredible <laughs> uh, we can use it uh, in very very different situations from small elements to paintings mosaics uh, excavations arch uh, building archaeology um, is the grammar used by the time to write itself on physical elements. We can use it even on big stratigraphies, big layers uh, at uh, uh, urban scale. This is the case uh, from um, the underground uh, uh, sea uh, of, the, of Rome, the reconstruction of the ancient uh, 
Palo environment of, of Rome. The matrix of Harris uh, is a very uh, powerful tool to visualize and organize all the actions uh, that are uh, recognizable inside an, ar an archaeological uh, site or on top of a uh, building, uh, an ancient building. Um, and what more, there is an enormous amount of scientific legacy data about this, um, this aspect, this, this stratigraphic reading. It reduces the complexity, it represents all the elements of the context and represents them in their temporal relations. And it sounds good for our proposal in virtual reconstruction. Um, the matrix of Harris uh, clusters the stratigraphy in periods in green, and the extended matrix fill lost epochs in red. The virtual stratigraphic unit, uh, together with the normal, uh, the normal stratigraphic units, are enclosed within chronological uh, epochs. Uh, the reconstruction of an epoch uh, lies between the phase to be reconstructed and the next phase. Um, the stratigraphic units can be grouped uh, in virtual actions for the sake of simplicity. For instance, uh, all the actions to construct, uh, to build a foundation, to build a colonnade, uh, the podium of a temple, and so on and so forth. I want to show you a short example with opening get and uh, opening blender. These two are the software we will use today. And uh, let me show you uh, the uh, case study shortly. Um, this is uh, a 3D model. You have all this stuff uh, uh, downloaded, uh, is the data set. I'm I was talking about, and uh, we can uh, uh, see um, a perimetral wall and uh, um, uh, this room was named by the archaeologist uh, um, room G. Um, it was uh, um, part of um, Roman uh, um, forge to uh, create uh, uh, iron objects, uh, small objects. And uh, it is good for us to just to um, see how to uh, create uh, um, an extended matrix. Um, I open uh, YED. I have already uh, the palette, uh, the extended matrix palette on the right this. Uh, don't worry, don't install it now. Uh, we will install it together after. Now it's just uh, have a look to the process to understand the big picture of the working process. So after we will work together on, on it. Okay. So uh, first of all, I have to uh, take and drag and drop uh, a new uh, workspace. That is this uh, um, matrix. Here I have the name of it is archaeological context. I can say uh, Monte Belluna. And uh, we have uh, different rows. Every uh, row is uh, an epoch, like in every uh, matrix of Harris. And uh, um, let's rename this epoch, that is epoch, uh, we rename it uh, in the second, third AD. Um, uh, actually, better um, second build, the second phase of this building. And uh, we rename also the reconstruction hypothesis hypothesis connected to this epoch. So we uh, can uh, state the uh, second building, REC. REC stands for reconstruction. 
and we start uh, to populate uh, uh, this matrix. Um, the name of uh, the, the perimetral wall, this one, for instance, is uh, USM 3018. I know it uh, from the archaeological documentation. And I take and drag and drop it, uh, the stratigraphic unit is a masonry stratigraphic unit, so USM, USM, so 3018. And uh, um, I put it inside the, the correct epoch here. Now, um, I want to um, provide a reconstruction hypothesis about this uh, um, this uh, um, room. So what we know is that uh, this kind of uh, building, in this epoch, has a, a small wall in, made in uh, stones, and after um, the rest of uh, the wall is made in pisse, that is uh, a um, uh, construction uh, system with uh, earth that is uh, a compact, they are adobe, the, um, not made on, uh, it's not cooked at adobes, uh, but uh, um, actually it's PC. I don't, I can't <laughs> describe it better. Um, but I will show you uh, an image immediately. So um, here in the, in Blender, I already um, uh, loaded the, the stratigraphy. And uh, I want to show you the, okay, here. Okay. Uh, sorry, I turn off what we don't need. Uh, okay, yes. Okay. Actually, is this uh, this wall here? The name of this wall is uh, USM thirty eighteen, and uh, the description of uh, this uh, uh, of this um, stratigraphic unit uh, is uh, here: wall structure closing the room G on the south side. We have different walls with different names, these three, okay? So uh, we can put all of them is 1390. And uh, Thirteen fifteen, okay, so um, now we want to express the uh, reconstruction hypothesis it it is uh, um, sure the um, the uh, the part of the wall that is made on with stones, okay? So, uh, we don't know exactly uh, the original eight of this part, but we have uh, on the um, on the field, we observed that uh, the maximum eight of uh, one of the uh, walls uh, was uh, 80 centimeters. So, we can add a document here inside the reconstruction period and we name it uh, at will. Normally it's an incremental um, doc, um, it's an incremental uh, numbering. And uh, uh, we will use uh, uh, as a document uh, um, 
the digital replica of the archaeological site. So we have just uh, uh, made a, a photogrammetric 3D model of uh, all the site, and we will we will use it uh, as uh, um, a source. And this is the symbol for the source. Um, actually, I remember the correct name of the document is the 08. And uh, we will uh, write down in the description of the, this element here, that is uh, uh, the photogrammetric uh, survey of the Monte Luna forge. Okay. Um, now uh, we want to, uh, to try to propose um, reconstruction of this uh, wall. And actually, is this uh, we can model it inside Blender, or just uh, think about it uh, in uh, um, in the extended matrix uh, in the head here. Uh, it depends a lot of uh, your um, taste, uh, your way of work on it. I prefer actually to um, draw the stratigraphy inside the head to imagine the reconstruction and after to uh, try to model it. But it's, it's up to you. It depends also if you are working together with another archaeologist. And um, uh, maybe uh, one archaeologist uh, can work on the YED and another archaeologist can work just on, in Blender to, to cooperate. Um, I want to put it uh, here, uh, a reconstruction hypothesis. I use the parallelogram um, symbol. That is this one. It stands for reconstruction. But there are two different uh, symbols, this and this, the parallelogram and the hexagon. What is the difference? In the case of the parallelogram, we are uh, restoring, uh, is the restoration of something that we, we have inside the excavation or uh, on a monument. Because we have here three stratigraphic units that actually are there. And we have just to restore the eight to a, a level. So the 80, um, the 80 centimeter we talked uh, about. So we will use the parallelogram because this, uh, the other one is for all the elements that uh, we need to just to imagine. For instance, uh, um, um, a lintel, over some columns, a part of a columnade, or the, floor, uh, the roof of a building where we don't have any tangible evidences. So, or we have tangible evidences and we restore them and we use this symbol, or we have to imagine, to hope that, our, that they were there, okay? And uh, you will see that uh, they will have uh, also different color inside the Blender. Uh, so I delete, delete this. And the USB 03 is uh, uh, on top on the tree, um, on top of these three um, virtual stratigraphic units. So this virtual stratigraphic unit is the reconstruction hypothesis of this wall. Uh, what I want to declare, what I want to describe about it, uh, properties. I put it here a property and uh, uh, I use, uh, I change the kind of edge. Uh, these uh, continue lines are just, uh, let me say, um, temporal, uh, um, relative temporal connections because one is older than the other. Uh, but in this case, uh, with uh, the dotted line, uh, we are uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, the process, the reconstructive process that is behind the USB 03. Okay, we have some evidences that are these three uh, stratigraphic units, the wall. We have uh, an hypothesis 
of uh, the upper part of this uh, broken wall. And uh, uh, we can say something about it. Uh, we want to talk about the property. What, pro what is the property? The eight, the eight of this wall, okay? And we want to describe it. How? Using uh, this document, D08, that is the photogrammetric survey, and uh, we need something in, in, in between. That is an extractor. What is an extractor? An extractor is uh, um, the interpretation of the source. We have the photogrammetric survey. We have to uh, read some information on this um, uh, survey and pass it to the property. For instance, I connect it here, here, okay? This is the com document. Uh, this uh, uh, extractor will be uh, um, the document 08. Uh, this is the first interpretation, 01. This is the naming. And uh, I will write here the interpretation of this, uh, that is uh, the maximum, uh, the maximum, sorry, the maximum, um, Heat uh, preserved um, belo belo belongs to the USM 04, that is in another part of the, um, the excavation, and is more than 18 centimeters from the floor. So this is the maximum height of the wall. And here in the height, uh, we can state that is, uh, for instance, 19 centimeter. So we will uh, set the height of this base of the um, wall uh, at 90 centimeter. Okay, there is a lot of uh, disorder here. Um, I have to move them around so I can lose my head uh, trying to take it uh, in an ordered way. Fortunately, we have a very powerful layout system here, and this is the uh, swim lane hierarchic way uh, that is incredible because uh, fits all the uh, needs of uh, a regular matrix of Harris and sure, all the extended matrix needs. So I set OK, and it is able to redraw it in order to, to work with it, OK? I can save it now. And I save it uh, uh, at will. It's just an example for you, test, OK? I save it. And now I can open Blender. I can create a new project easy and go in the extended matrix panel we have, we will install it immediately and open the graphml file that is test graphml file i set accept and load it now i have all the elements here okay and now um, i have to uh, join this uh, the extended matrix with the um, um, the the 3D model, and uh, just an example. I create uh, three different uh, cubes, and now I link them. I select it, and I say that it is uh, the USM 3018. I click on this uh, button. I go to 1319, I say that it is. I go here and the set is as 1315. And uh, another, just another one for the virtual stratigraphic unit uh, here, I set at this one. And uh, uh, see what? Um, Blender uh, is able to uh, choose the correct color for uh, the, the elements, just linking them and the Blender will take care of everything. Here we, ha we have a lot of tools uh, in the extended metrics tool 
that is the, um, the plugin we will install. Um, we can show the extended matrix color. So red is what we have. Blue is the restoration of what we have. And uh, um, we have also the periods visualization. Let's see, uh, different color for uh, this epoch and the reconstruction of this epoch. These color are exactly what you have here. If you change this color here, I go here and choose uh, green, for instance. I, say, I save it and I go in Blender and uh, I reload it and here we are. Um, here in the period manager, I, I'm, I am able to um, turn on and turn off just the epoch I want or the reconstruction in order to create uh, 3D models that uh, uh, represent just a specific epoch of my archaeological site. Okay, just to have a, a, a first idea about it. Um, in this uh, um, plugin, we have also the Paradata Manager. What is Paradata? Paradata are uh, all the elements we draw with the dotted line. So uh, with the continuous line, we have the stratigraphy. With the dotted line, we have uh, all the elements we use, the sources, the interpretations, and the reasoning we use to um, provide the reconstruction, to validate the reconstruction. I hope you are able to hear me. Okay, uh, so let's go back to Brenda. Uh, so the Paradata Manager, we have all the elements connected to the interpretation. So uh, I have for this object here, the upper part of the wall, the eight is 19 centimeter. I use the, this interpretation, this extractor node, the maximum height, uh, blah, 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 preserved. And uh, here, uh, the, the, um, uh, the document, the source we use, this is the photogrammetric survey. I am able to create, uh, to set also a link, a new URL uh, that can be connected to a 3D model inside Blender or to a web page or whatever you want. So we can put it uh, here also uh, um, an URI, an Univoc research, uh, resource, sorry. Uh, so um, uh, you have the possibility to see everything that you have inside the YED to see it in Blender. And if you want to add, to perform more information, to add more information, to expand your research in YED, you will have uh, uh, just uh, uh, a hot uh, reload and everything will be fine inside Blender. You can work uh, also on, on the cloud because the YED uh, um, files are very um, teeny. So uh, you can upload and download them uh, between two different computers, two different users in seconds. And so you can work in team working uh, very well. Um, what is the scenario? You can have uh, an archeologist that is not uh, able to work with, with 3D uh, modeling and uh, an archeologist that is more proficient in uh, 3D modeling, but maybe is not uh, the, the person the, in charge with the excavation, for instance. And so they, uh, they can work together to create, uh, to annotate uh, the stratigraphy on the, the 3D models. Um, uh, five minutes more to show you um, this part uh, and we open together the, dat the data set and the install. So, um, so the extended matrix nodes. We have uh, um, the regular matrix, uh, we have uh, the stratigraphy. In the extended matrix, we have the virtual stratigraphic unit nodes, the upper uh, row. We have the property node that describes the size, the appearance, the material of the reconstructed USB. You have to choose what to, uh, to declare about a virtual stratigraphic unit. If you are proficient with the eight, you want to describe the eight, the decoration, the material. Um, if you don't know about it, you don't 
uh, explain it. There is the extractor node, uh, that is the third uh, row, that is what we used and is able to, in interpret, uh, to interpret something uh, on the, a source node, that is the objective data. But we have also the reasoning node. We will, we, you will use it, uh, uh, you will see it uh, in, the, uh, in the real case study, in the data set you have. And uh, is uh, useful to interpolate uh, multiple sources. So um, you have a, a source, you have a, an interpretation of the source, and you have another source and its interpretation. You have to combine them with a reasoning, a more uh, um, advanced reasoning about. So taking in account this and taking in account this, uh, I say this and populate the property. So the digital restoration and uh, the, um, the way we uh, annotate it on the right, the, the, egg, the octagons are related to uh, the um, elements that are uh, not in situ. This digital replica, this block of a capital was found inside the stratigraphy, not on, in its original place. So we use, uh, is a special find for us, and we use uh, uh, an octagon. And its digital restoration is uh, an octagon as well, but with black uh, background. Black background is a virtual stratigraphic unit. White background is um, a real uh, object, tangible object. Uh, with, we can create a digital anastylosis um, with more uh, special finds. Um, and uh, finally, we have the virtual reconstruction. The virtual reconstruction, um, be careful, is uh, the uh, reconstruction of a given epoch in an explicit hypothesis. Uh, the extended matrix uh, is a higher level of synthesis, represent the context uh, on all the chronological phase. We, you can store inside it uh, different virtual reconstructions, a re virtual reconstruction for each epoch, because in, an, in a matrix you have different epochs and you, have, you can have uh, as well different reconstructions. A reconstruction for each epoch we want to, uh, to study. So the idea is to open a Blender now and to open, um, uh, I share the screen again, and to open, uh, um, uh, to install, sorry, uh, the, um, the two um, plugins. Okay, let's start with Blender. So please open, open Blender. And uh, um, in Blender, we can install uh, a lot of plugins. There are a lot of plugins. It's an ecosystem, incredible ecosystem. Uh, we have to go in Edit, uh, Preferences. And here we have uh, the Add-on tab. Uh, you downloaded a zip file. You don't have to unzip it. Okay, you have to provide a zipped version of the plugin to Blender. So you go to install, go uh, to the, um, I need to download, yeah. And select the, uh, the extended matrix tool. Uh, maybe for you it's not like this, it's master. EM Blender tools, master, okay. If you have some trouble, um, if you want to try to install it right now and not after, uh, please feel free to ask um, opening the microphone if something is, uh, is going wrong. Um, you install the add-on and you will get something like this. Uh, uh, finally, <laughs> after two years of development, um, I added um, an updater, so you are able to um, check for 
if the add-on is update uh, and update from here. So mm, be careful. Uh, this add-on is under constant development. So uh, you will see on uh, the you, you will you have to try to uh, update it uh, sometimes, uh, or uh, you will if you follow the Sended Matrix web page, uh, the Facebook group, uh, you will be notified about uh, major um, upgrades. So now with the mouse inside the, the 3D environment, you press N numbers and you, uh, you will have uh, here the extended matrix panel. Here you can open uh, mm, the graph ML here. If, if you have uh, one to open, and you will uh, load it inside the Blender, okay? Let's see the installation of uh, the YED palette. So, to use uh, YED for the extended matrix, we need to install a palette with uh, all the nodes of um, this formal language. Um, is the extended matrix palette, the version 1.2. And you can install it here in the edit manage palette. And here you can, you have to import section and you have to provide the, the graph ML file. So you have to unzip uh, the file of uh, you downloaded and import it. And you will find, uh, finally, uh, the extended matrix palette here. When you have it here, on the right, uh, so import section, find, uh, browse uh, your file inside the operating system the computer and take the uh, extended matrix palette in the graph LML for, um, file format, not the zip version. You install it, and here we are close and you have uh, all the nodes here okay i describe uh, uh, briefly the data set uh, this data set uh, is uh, uh, we will um, open it we have a look inside it but it's something that uh, you have to study a little bit by yourself okay because uh, there are a lot of stuff here but uh, um, is a step-by-step -step procedure. So I think you don't, uh, you will not uh, be lost on it. Um, let's start uh, from the Fucina room G example, step one, graph ML. Double click on it. Okay, uh, this is the, the matrix of Harris of uh, the um, Smithy of Montebelluna. And I just added the, the deep dot something on the extractor nodes. It was a, an error on the data set, sorry. Um, and let's open the step one of Fucina G example step one. Okay. Uh, the workflow of the extended matrix is a four step work. The step one, um, after importing the photogrammetric model, if we have one, and uh, other graphical documentation, in this case, uh, uh, we have this document here, that is the, the footprint of uh, this, uh, the, the archaeological study, uh, the archaeological excavation. Um, it is possible to start to model the proxies uh, representing uh, the stratigraphic units. Um, um, let's see an example. I'm here, I select uh, the proxies group. Uh, what you can see on the right uh, corner is uh, um, they are uh, um, collections in Blender. And you can just to, make, to take them um, in an ordered way, so just for, to organize 
the project. You can have the reality-based model, the collection in all the stuff inside, uh, the proxies uh, that are the, um, the elements, the correct elements. Uh, they are like in the GIS, uh, the point, the line, and the polygons. They are uh, the uh, bricks of uh, the GIS environment, the vector, the to vector mm, to digitalize. Uh, for instance, uh, the raster, an orthophoto of an archaeological excavation. And you redraw it uh, with these elements to vector elements. Uh, in 3D, you have the proxy. The proxy is a 3D model. The 3D version of, uh, um, um, of uh, sorry, <laughs> of um, a stratigraphic unit. And so we use it. Uh, to digitalize uh, um, and to redraw the elements. So the idea is to en encapsulate uh, the stratigraphic units uh, modeling uh, some uh, cubes, some very simple geometries, okay? When I do this, uh, for instance, um, you will forgive me about it, uh, but I, I, we have no time to model it uh, in a proper way. But let's say that this is the 1318, I think it was the correct name. I select it here and just uh, click here. And uh, I associate it. And uh, by now we have uh, this uh, uh, chain here. That it means uh, uh, there is a proxy for this stratigraphic unit, okay? And uh, uh, the color is red. We can choose here uh, the period visualization and this uh, orange, but this is what we want, the extended matrix uh, uh, visualization, the degree of reliability of the model. Um, we can change on uh, um, real time the alpha material, so we can work better on it uh, or change the visualization uh, of, uh, of this proxy. Uh, when, we have, uh, when we have done uh, all uh, uh, the stratigraphic uh, digitization, we can uh, skip, uh, we can go to the step two. So open the step two. The step two, um, after modeling the proxies, uh, representing the stratigraphic units, uh, it is time to go back in the extended matrix uh, in YED and starting with the reconstruction hypothesis. So we create uh, in YED the reconstruction hypothesis. When we have this, this is the representation on here, you will see that is uh, uh, actually is the um, matrix of Harris all the stratigraphic units with different colors because there are different epochs. And we go back in YED and open this time uh, the example, the compl complex example. Uh, we have uh, in the rows regarding the reconstruction, we have uh, um, all the stratigraphic virtual stratigraphic units and uh, um, the properties and interpretations, the reasoning, and the sources. So, um, after the extended matrix creation in YED, or in parallel, we can work together with another colleague. It is possible to model the proxies related to the, to the uh, extended matrix, um, and to create uh, the fragmental anastylosis of special finds, if we have uh, special uh, finds here. Um, and the extended matrix color schema for these proxies are blue. Uh, okay. If uh, we have the restoration of the walls, for instance, of restoration of physical elements, or green, uh, if we have uh, something that uh, we don't have evidence, tangible evidence about them, or yellow special find anastylosis, we will have elements in yellow. Um, in um, as proxies, if uh, we are using uh, uh, non-in-situ elements, we don't have the 
certain about the, the real position of this object uh, inside our reconstruction, but we know a lot of things about it. We know the material, we, need, we know uh, part of the, um, the dimensions when we have uh, a special find. We have part uh, of a lintel. Uh, we have a lot of things because we know exactly the material of this object but we don't know exactly the position. So it's a, uh, something that is in between, and this is yellow for us, okay? Uh, the colors of, are automatically assigned to the extended matrix tool. When we finish to model the upper part of it, we, we skip to, we go to the um, step three. The step three um, um, start here when we have uh, all the um, proxies there. Uh, this model is very useful because we can uh, go to um, if we are we are working uh, uh, in an in a commercial product. Uh, we are working on a commercial product. Maybe we need to go to the, the to our client to. Um, final uh, customer, sorry, and to, to know if it's okay, we can work again on it. Uh, we need uh, an external um, help uh, to validate the model and we can use it. Because uh, uh, it's something that is uh, still something that you understand the dimensions, the volumes, and so on and so forth. And it's very easy to uh, modify it, okay? because they are just uh, raw polygons, very simple polygons. And it's, no, but I don't want it here. Uh, please move 10 centimeters on the right. <laughs> okay, I move it, it's simple now, but uh, when uh, we uh, finish the model with all the textures, the material, the shaders there, uh, it will be a pain to modify it. So uh, this is a very good model for the a validation step with, uh, with some, some external uh, people. So it's time to model the representation model. What is the representation model? It's the model with all the texture is uh, the best graphical representation. This part can be done with uh, by a third um, uh, person that can be a um, uh, very skilled uh, 3D modeler. So an archaeologist, uh, um, archaeologists with 3D modeling um, skills and a very skilled 3D modeler. Uh, that will start here and he will start here clicking on the D's for instance and uh, um, he will know, let me show you, using this tool uh, he will know that uh, this is the USB 101 and the building technique is a master instructor in PSA. Um, and uh, he, uh, he will be, or she will be, um, able to click here on the source, opening the file linked. So um, he, she will be able to see uh, a photos of a, a wall made in PSA in order to, to choose the correct texture and so on and so forth. You, we, you have to provide everything here inside the YED, inside the extended matrix. And all this information is uh, loaded also by the very skilled 3D modeler at the end. Maybe not skilled in archaeology, but uh, you, he, she uh, will have everything uh, around uh, inside the Blender environment to work on it. And uh, now, at the end of this step, we will have uh, the last uh, um, step, uh, that is the exporting. So uh, we use it, we will use it. And now, what we have? We have um, the reality-based model. This is, this is a source, okay? But is not only a source. It is uh, only. Uh, it is also the representation of this model in 2016. In our case, okay, is the representation of this model, the reconstruction of this model in that time. Um, we have the the proxies and the source based. 
the source based is the, the representation of a model. With the forge, in and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, now we have an export manager to export the proxies uh, or the representation model. Um, you can join uh, all the elements here, the representation model. You can join uh, all the elements. For instance, these three elements, we know that these are part, um, uh, belongs to the last period. So I select them, I select the last period, and I click on plus. So we are adding these elements on that period. So when I will go to export uh, uh, the representation model, I will have a folder for each epoch I want to publish. And uh, uh, I can publish it in Unreal, in Godot, in Unity, uh, in um, Sketchfab, wherever, uh, because it will be optimized with PBR uh, materials. I can export also uh, the tables. Uh, this is very useful. For instance, I want to export the extended matrix uh, uh, in CSV uh, version. Sorry. Uh, yep. Yeah. I click on it and let me show you. I will have it, I will get this, the name, the description, the epoch, the type, and so on and so forth. Um, or I want to export now the sources I used, the extractors I used for the interpretations, okay? And so on and so forth. Um, or I can generate uh, an ambic folder the Ambic folder is a way to publish immediately on the web uh, this, uh, this reconstruction. Um, Bruno Fanini, my colleague from CNR, is uh, uh, coding this uh, platform. It's based on Atom, a very powerful uh, uh, platform he uh, created. Um, this is an example of how, uh, on, on how it works is something that uh, uh, is able to uh, visualize and inspect the model and open uh, all the information behind uh, the, the proxies. Uh, this is an old desktop based version. Now the new version is this. Ouch. I will share this uh, link with you, but I really prefer to, uh, maybe we will do some uh, more seminars on this part because this is a part uh, very interesting. Sorry, I have to shut down the cloud. Okay, and here is a web-based tool the possibility to interact and see all the stratigraphy and also the reconstruction. Clicking on the elements and you see that if I go on the timetable here, this part is just after the last period with also with this. In the previous period, you don't have this part, okay? And everything is automatically created with the exporter from the EM tools. Ouch. Okay, yeah. Um, I want to talk just a few minutes, uh, sorry for uh, the long time, uh, to want to introduce you to the Open Extended Matrix Initiative. So the idea is uh, that we are working uh, on this uh, tool uh, by, by almost uh, four, four years of development five years of development. And uh, um, we want now to open it uh, to the community as much as possible uh, in order to create uh, um, synergies. And so creating a registration form for the, of eligibility for students, for independent researchers, for institutions, 
so that uh, uh, it is possible to uh, create uh, um, a working group with different, not only the CNR uh, laboratory, but a working group with different uh, uh, stakeholders um, that uh, uh, declared to use it, that uh, are trying to use it, uh, the extended matrix in the project, using it uh, independently, without, with support uh, by the, our laboratory. Your data is your data, you work on your data, um, and uh, maybe with free hosting on our server for the visualization part. Uh, but uh, uh, giving a small example of uh, the project for, um, as a, a, a subset um, of your data set in the extended matrix gallery. So we can populate with different case studies. So um, the idea is to, uh, that we want uh, as a laboratory to help people uh, you ad adopting uh, this tool and uh, uh, providing some uh, tools uh, and hosting of uh, um, the publication of the of or you can download and install uh, the envic tool for the visualization on your server it's fine because it's, everything is open source and uh, uh, you can download and install it by yourself but if you don't want to um, to start installing uh, and working on this side, you can use uh, free hosting on our server and uh, uh, publishing uh, a part, a small part of your dataset as an example for the community, giving back something to the community as for uh, as a um, um, as an example for the community to understand that it can be used also in this case you provided. Uh, or you can, more than that, you can be part of it, providing a feedback, uh, contribute uh, to coding. Everything is on GitHub, okay? And uh, uh, the best part for me is to participate in the extended matrix development. Uh, the idea is to meet all together uh, once per year, and uh, talking about uh, the extended matrix, uh, the presenting uh, the case studies to the community, and uh, uh, even uh, proposing uh, modifications on the extended matrix uh, core. Uh, and at the end of uh, uh, the workshop uh, the, of the working community on the extended matrix, uh, we will. We want to uh, write and sign together uh, the next uh, version of the extended matrix, a white paper uh, that can be published online and used by the all the community, um, so that uh, uh, this project uh, will not be only the project of our laboratory, but a project uh, that is uh, a community. <laughs>